Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. It is that time of year and we are at the end of the year. It's that time to start looking for our planners for the new year. Now that can be very exciting and it can be a little bit overwhelming for some people. I thought it would be the perfect time to go ahead and do a planning 101 video. But as I started putting all of the information together, different types of binders you can choose, different sizes, different layouts, and all kinds of other things, I quickly discovered that this video was going to be way too long. So rather than having a really long video, I am doing a planning 101 series. The nice thing about the series is you don't have to watch it in any particular order. You can just pick and choose the topics that are going to help you out. Or of course, you could just watch the whole series. Now, if this is the first time that you are stopping in, thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I'm Tina. I hope you enjoy your stay here. Please subscribe and be sure to hit that notification bell when you do. All right, let's get to it. Hi, welcome to Planning 101. Now, when you're picking out your planner, I feel that there's three things that are most important. There's the binding that you're going to choose, there's the layout, and then there's the size. Today, I'm going to be talking about the size of the planner that is going to work best for you. All right, so bottom line, yes, size does matter. Yes, I know. Okay, I had to say it, sorry. <laughs> but let's go ahead and talk about the different sizes that are available in your planner systems. Now, there's so many different sizes available. It can be really, really overwhelming. As I was putting all of the information together, I... I was feeling overwhelmed, but I'm hoping that by sharing some of this with you, it's going to help um, you feel a little bit more comfortable when you're picking out a planner. And I'm just going to share the information with you and then talk a little bit about maybe why you'd want to choose a certain size. And th a lot of this obviously is just from my own personal opinion, things that I've tried myself, what's kind of worked, what hasn't worked out. And then just kind of give you examples of, um, you know, what size is going to work best for you, depending on what you're going to be using it for. Now, the other thing to consider is that not every like planner binding system is going to carry all of the different sizes. So I did create some like cutout charts to sort of like show you what's available in particular binding systems. And that should hopefully help you like kind of narrow things down a little bit. All right, so the first one that I wanna talk about are the sizes that are available in a disc bound system. Disc bound systems are my personal favorite, so I obviously have a lot more experience about those. So I'm going to first talk about those. And with a disc bound system, you know, there's different variations even within that particular like sizing. Um, but let's just start off with kind of like basic sizes. And the sizes that I'm talking about are happy planner sizes because a lot of smaller companies also have product that will fit into those sizes. So those are kind of like a standard set. So I'm going to show you the planners, but then I'm also going to give you the dimensions. So that way that will help you kind of, you know, see for yourself because me showing you on video, you see one thing, but when you actually have it like in your hands, it's going to be something different. So I'm also going to give you dimensions. That way you have that to reference. All right, so these are the three right here, kind of almost like small, medium, and large. So I'm gonna just talk about each one individually. So this first one right here, this one is the Happy Planner mini size, and that is a 4.6 by seven size. Another way to know like what size you might be looking at specifically in a disc bound system is to count how many discs there are. A mini has seven discs. So if you're looking at pictures, you're, it's hard to tell like what size it is that you're looking at. So if you're not sure, count the discs. Seven discs is a mini, all right? And again, those dimensions are like 4.6 by seven. So like four and a half by seven inches. And um, then the next size is going to be the classic size. And that one has nine discs on it. So if you're looking at pictures, count the discs and the size of the classic is a seven by nine and a quarter right and then we've got the happy planner big size 
and this one has 11 discs on here. And this one is like a full letter size, an eight and a half by 11, right? So kind of gives you an idea. Now, this is like a full sheet of paper size big. And I personally would not want to take this with me like on the go. But again, you know, to each his own. But this is really a big size. Um, like I said, it's eight and a half by 11. And this is the largest you're going to find. The classic one is actually pretty much the standard, and this one tends to be very standard sizing. Even with like other planning systems, you're going to find a lot of planners in this size um, and then smaller than this. So the mini right here, this one to me makes a really good like on the go type of planner because you can fit it into your purse or your tote a lot more easily than you can these other two. But again, you know, you can have this to go. It just, you know, depends on your personal needs for it. So it is really important for you to know what you're going to be using your planner for because you want to make sure that you are um, picking the right size. Because if you have a planner that you are going to be toting around, you want to think about that. You know, like, how big do I want it? Because I'm going to be traveling with this you know, back and forth every single day. So something to really consider when you are picking out the size of the planner, where the planner is going to live is really, really important. And also, obviously, how you're going to use the planner because you want to have enough writing space for whatever it is that you need it for. All right, I'm just going to open this up kind of randomly here. All right. So, um, and I'm not talking about layouts today because layouts are going to be a different video. So make sure that you are subscribed, hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss any of the videos for the Planning 101 series and obviously my other content as well. But you definitely want to make sure that whatever size you pick out, you're giving yourself enough room to do the things that you need to do because that's why you have the planner. You know, it's so important to make sure about that. All right. So I just really, really want to emphasize that. And um, let's go on to talk a little bit more about some of the other disc bound sizes that are available. So here's the cutouts that I created for specifically the disc bound system. So I already gave you the example of the HP mini and you see the size there. It's it said 4.6, I think it's more like four and a half, but either way, it's like this, you know, it's very similar um, by seven. And then now there is another one and it's a junior half letter size. I do not have one of those. They are very, very popular right now. Those have eight discs to them. And I mean, they're beautiful. I, I It's the size I think I might wanna try next, honestly. Um, I do have something that's similar as far as the dimensions up and down this way, and that's this one right here. So you kind of get an idea. It's a little bit, um, it's kind of like the same dimension here, but a half letter is actually a little bit slimmer than what this one is right here. This happens to be an A5 disc bound. So there's like, I don't know, I want to say like hybrids of the different sizes that you can find from different companies. So that's why there's so much to choose from and it can definitely become a little bit overwhelming. So you kind of want to think, well, what's going to be the most important thing for you? The binding system, you know, discover what binding system you really, really like and then think about the size. That's probably the way that I would figure out what size planner I want to get. All right, the next size, of course, is the Happy Planner Classic size. And that's the one with the nine discs. And then there is the big, which is the full letter. So I'm gonna just kind of like place these like this. So that way you can kind of see, you know, how things sort of like play out when you look at like the bigger sizes. And then here's, of course, my hand. Obviously, it's a little bit different, but you kind of get an idea this way about like what size you're looking at. All right, the next thing that I want to talk about are ring planner sizes because those are definitely different. And I do have a few of them, but I'm going to share with you the different sizes that are available first, and then I'm going to show you the planners that I have. 
So here are the cutouts for the ring size planners. And this one is like kind of like, I would say probably one of the largest. They probably do have like bigger than this, but this size seems to be very popular. It's an A5. It's five and a half by eight and a half. I mean, it's definitely smaller than your classic size happy planner. So if you're familiar with like that sizing, but it's still a little too big for you, this might be something that you might like. Um, then there's a B6 size, and that one is a little bit shorter and not quite as wide, just a tiny bit narrower and shorter. And this one is 5.3 by seven. And then these two are personal sizes. Now one is a personal wide and that's 4.75 by 6.75. And then this is the personal size. And this one is um, 3.75 by 6.75. So the height is the same. It's just that the wide one obviously is a little bit wider. Then there is an A6 size, which is a 4.1 by 5.75, and then the pocket, which is a 3.2 by 4.7. So you can see how things can be really overwhelming because there's so many sizes to choose from. And I, I do have a few of these to show you in the ring bound planning system. I do not have the A5, but I do have the B6. So, um, and then I have ones that are smaller. So let's me show you the B6. So here's the B6. And if you have a happy planner um, mini, that one is what's going to be the similar size. So the happy planner mini and the B6 are similar in size, but of course the B6 has the ring binding system and you're going to find those um, in planning covers. That's the other thing. So if you're trying to figure out what size you want, um, take into consideration the binding. I really think that picking out the binding that you really prefer is probably the best way for you to go. Like find a binding that you really like the best and then decide what size you need to get from there. All right, so I'm gonna put these to the side. Now the next one I'm gonna show you that I personally have is the personal size. The personal size, this one is definitely very similar to like a Happy Planner Mini again, but it is narrower. But if you're looking at like the whole system, it's very similar. You see how it's like the same sizing, but this has got more space to write in because there's no cover holding the planning system. This one is much narrower because this is how this system is set up. The rings are in like these beautiful planner covers. I love them, they're so gorgeous, but these are things to consider. So if you like this size, for instance, okay, but um, you know, you want a little bit more writing area, then you might want to look into going with a personal wide because that's going to give you a much bigger area to write in. So here's like your personal size here. It's a little bit smaller. Um, this is a new system for me that I'm starting in 2022, which I will be doing a separate video about this. But for now, I'm just sharing with you like the rings, and then of course the size. That's what today's video is about, is the actual sizing of the planner that you wanna pick out. So you get a little bit of an idea, it's definitely narrower than your happy planner sizing. Now, if you want something that's even smaller than this, then there are like the A6 size, and the A6 size, I don't have that planner to show you, um, but you can see for yourself here that it's definitely shorter, but it is a little bit wider. So if you prefer something maybe not as tall as this right here, then you could go a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. But you have to remember when you're picking these sizes that that is the size of the cutouts of the paper. It's not the size of the complete like system itself because with the ring system, you have to take into account the actual planning cover, all right? So 
if you see a size, you think that's gonna work great for you, but you open it up and you look at the inserts and they're too small for you, you want a bigger size, then you have to consider that you're going to have bigger all the way around as far as the um, planning cover. And that's how these are set up. So just think about that if you're looking at um, you know different planning systems. All right, the next one I wanna share with you is the pocket. Now the pocket is so super cute. Like look at how little this is. It's so adorable. Look at that, so, so cute, right? But again, you open it up, look at how little the paper is that you have to work with. I mean, it's super adorable and the size of the inserts are 3.2 by 4.7, but that's all you have. This is the paper that you have to work with, all right? So you want to think about that. Like, how are you going to use this? You know, it's super cute and you get it and you're like, oh my gosh, look at how little, you know what I mean? Like you don't have a whole lot of paper to work with. So depending on what you're going to be using this for, then you want to think about, is this really going to work out for me? This one did not work out for me. It's adorable. I was like so intrigued with these pocket planners because I kept seeing them. So super cute. And I set this up and I, I mean, I love it, but it's definitely not something functional for me. Uh, and the cover that I have just happens to be a little bit bulkier. Like it's, there's actually, this actually fits into another um, planner cover, but um, and it's really nice, but again, the planning paper, the paper that I needed, the space was just not enough for me. So as much as I love this and had so much fun setting it up, I don't use it. It's really cute though, and it sits on my desk and I really, really enjoy it. But it's just a showpiece. It's not a functional planner for me, all right? So if you wanna do that for yourself, feel free, but I'm just, you know, showing you all the different things that you can get and how you want to use them is obviously completely up to you. The ones that I have right here, these are spiral bound planners and a spiral bound planner you can pretty much find in like, I feel like any size, they have them pretty much available in all these different sizes. The ones that I have here, this one is by Purple Trail, and this one is a six by eight. I really like this size. I think it's just a really, really nice size. It seems to be kind of like closest, I guess, to the half letter size that you would find in like a ring bound planner, and then the half letter in the disc bound system that you would find. So you can kind of get an idea of the, um, sizes comparing them to like the different binding systems that are available. So I really do like this size. I think that this is a really, really nice size. This one is an Erin Condren and this is a seven by nine. So this one is going to be most similar to the Happy Planner size, the classic, because the classic is a seven by 9.25. So you could see that these two are like comparable. So if you like this type of system, the binding system, the disc bound system versus the spiral bound, then I would go with the Happy Planner Classic size. All right, now the next thing that I wanna talk about are the like TNs, which are like traveler's notebooks. And those you're going to find, you can find them pretty much in different sizes, but the two that I found that were most popular is a B6 size in a TN, and that one's a five by seven, and that one is like this one right here. So a TN is like this little booklet, right? So, but that's the sizing. And then a TN in an A6 size, that one is a little bit smaller. So you can see that there are different, like there's interchangeable sizes available and it really depends on what kind of binding you are looking for because this B6 is in the TN is similar of course to the B6 in the ring system. And that one is similar to the mini happy planner size in your disc bound system. So these three right here you can find 
in those different types of bindings. So there are some crossovers definitely around. It's really, to me, honestly, it's finding the right binding that you like first and then deciding what size is gonna be available in that binding. Because if you fall in love with a particular size, you may not find that in the binding that you're looking for. So these are all things to kind of consider. All right, now there's like different sizes available. Like this one right here is a Hobonichi. And this, honestly, I have this because I was gifted this. Um, it's really cute. It's a completely different style of planning that I am not like used to at all. I know nothing about it. It's intriguing and it's really pretty. But um, this particular one happens to be by the Pink Room Company. She does some beautiful Hobonichi sizes. And um, this is just a completely like different, it's much more narrow. It's very similar to, I would say, probably the personal size in your ring bound planners, but it's a little bit taller. So you kind of get an idea of all of the different sizes that are available and it can be very, very overwhelming. So bottom line, I would say to choose the binding system that you like best and then choose the size that you want to get. And as far as what's the right size for you, I would say you want to determine where that planner is gonna live. You know, if you're gonna be toting it around, like I said earlier, you wanna think about that. And if you're not toting it around, where is it gonna live like at home or where is it gonna live at work? Like how much space do you have if you want the planner to just be sitting on your desk somewhere or sitting somewhere that you are, it's just gonna kind of live there. You know, you're gonna have enough room to work with it. Um, and also you wanna consider how much paper space you're going to want to work on. So those are just a few different things. I realize that this is, um, there's a lot to decide when you're picking out a planner. And I just wanted to kind of show you the different things, give you kind of like an overview of it. It can be overwhelming when you start seeing all of the beautiful items that are out there. So make yourself a list and figure out, is this planner going to live in my purse? Is this planner going to live at home? Is this planner going to live at work? And then kind of make your decisions from there. That's probably one of the best things that I can advise you when you are picking out a planner. So uh, if you have any questions about any of the sizes, I will be more than happy to help you the best that I can. So be sure to drop a comment down below. And if I don't know the answer, I can always try to find it out for you or maybe somebody else might be able to answer it for you in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed this video and please remember to be following me on Instagram at It's a Wonderful Plan and remember to subscribe to me here hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified when my other videos come out. All right, I will see you in the next one. Bye.